Welcome. Welcome to The Long Road. My name is Chris Roberts, your host. I have two guests today. I have Mr. Alan Camille, principal of um, Keene High School, and I have with him guests as Leslie Farmer, athletic director. The, the purpose of today's show is Keene's, Keene High Athletics. In the past, we had newspapers that used to cover day-to-day, -day really updates, especially on the weekends, but we all know that newspapers are getting smaller and smaller as they fight against the internet. And so the goal of today's show was to talk about Keen High Athletics because you've had a lot of success, you've had a lot of talented people, you have some great coaches, and people have been asking, what about this person, what about that person? So hopefully in the next 45, 50 minutes, we'll be able to enlighten a lot of the, um, the individuals. The first two I would like to start off on is a football team. Everybody likes to talk about football. And for the longest time, Keene hasn't been very good at football. But this year changed it. What do you think um, was one of the reasons for that? I, I think one of the big things was adding lights uh, on the <coughs> football field. Uh, I'm from the Midwest originally, and, and uh, you don't play football on Saturday. You play football on Friday night. Uh, I was used to say one of the easiest things to do if you wanted to rob a town was going Friday night when they were when they were on the road, and I still remember that first Friday night we played. It was just like a magical evening when you watched everything happen, and, and our crowds were bigger. I think uh, our smallest crowd was the size of the homecoming game it the was. previous year. Uh, it just allows people to come out after work. It it, it becomes a, a family environment and. You know, you have to take your hats off to all those people that, that put that together. That wasn't an easy project. And I know the first couple of games were still running off a generator because they couldn't connect. But uh, it was just amazing. And, when, and you, when you saw people come from other towns that didn't have it, they were just, just amazed at, uh, at how well it went. And, and like I said, and the crowds were phenomenal. But when you look at that, you also have to look at uh, John Lupa, the head coach. Uh, he's, done, he's done a great job. And uh, with the addition of Tommy Fowler, as his assistant two years ago, it, uh, the pieces are coming together. And uh, I guess I think back to Matt Schmidt, who's our soccer coach. He's been with us now, what, two years, I think? No, he just finished his sixth season. Six, six, he talks about changing the culture. And uh, I think that's what we're doing is changing the culture with our players and, and our families. I don't <clears throat> want to get make sure we get back to, to Mr. Fowler. As, as the athletic director, does it make it heck of a lot easier to schedule um, – teams to come into Keene now that you have the lights? Oh, much easier. Every, every school plays on Friday night other than when they would play Keene. With the exception perhaps maybe of a homecoming here or there, all of Division I plays on a Friday night. And we were the only Division I school that was still playing on Saturday afternoon. It's much easier. It's a nice end of the school day on Friday. We had a tremendous number of students attend the games now instead of Saturday afternoons when many of them are working or family committed to other things. Um, the student section, which they have affectionately labeled the birdcage, uh, was packed for Friday night football. I didn't have the experience of Friday night football in high school. My high school was brand new, Chris. I have to tell you, it's electrifying. It is just electrifying. Even with the generator for the first couple of weeks, it was still electrifying. And the visiting teams that came in, they said, oh, my goodness, this is so much better. You've improved the um, bleachers. The press box is better. There was enough room for visiting crews to film, for our crew to film, for the scoreboard, for the radio to be upstairs with Bob Lund. Um, and then there was a couple of extra windows for our high school television production class and for individual parents that might want to film um, and make tapes for their student athletes. It just was wonderful. But I remember the very first year that Alan Camille was with us and we were at the football banquet and he said that um, seasons are really made in the off season. Programs are built in the off season. And I really have to commend John Lupa and his staff for what they do in the off season. And they start the day after the football season ends on that weekend. Um, it has made a huge difference. And you, you talk about <clears throat> Mr. Fowler, and you talk about changing the culture. He's the baseball coach. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And the baseball coach, as the baseball team has a winning culture, they, when they start, they expect to win. 
it's not a, are we going to play, what, mm -hmm. what is the season? When they start every season, we're going to win, we're going to be competitive. So Mr. Fowler going to the football team helped bring part of that, that yes, culture he forward. He brought that same culture yeah. forward. His culture is not, is not where are we going to, but are we going to be number one, number two, number three? Where are we going to finish? Not we hope to finish. Um, I think he brought that culture uh, with him to football, and you can see the difference that that has made in the last two or three seasons. And I think the other thing with, with Mr. Fowler, it's the way he handles students. He has very high expectations, and if he wants here, you're not going to go here. You're going to go there, or you're going to rise above. And, it, you know, I think you said it, Chris, it's, you know, are, are we going to win? It's not if you're going to win, it's by how much. And, but do it with class, and he does it with class. He, he has some pretty high, uh, high expectations. If a student gets in trouble, they, they don't play. They sit. And I've worked with Mr. Fowler a couple of times. We've had a contract negotiation. And one of the things I like about Mr. Fowler is he may have high expectations, but those expectations are, are based on your potential. Yes, they're attainable. Right. They're, they're attainable, attainable ones. Yeah. If you work hard enough, you can make it. Right. I'll help you make it if you're willing to put the effort in. So Mr. Fowler wants to retire. Is he retiring just from teaching, or is he going to retire from coaching too? But we don't know yet. He's retiring just from teaching. Uh, okay. Mr. Fowler and I have bus duty every morning. And it was a couple of weeks ago I, when we were talking that he was retiring. And I said, now you're not going to retire from uh, athletics. He says, no, as long as you want me, I'll still be here. And I, I think th that's a piece that has to stay together. That piece of the puzzle has to stay together. Now, state champs, the golf team. Fabulous. <laughs> amazing. Just amazing. Amazing. <laughs> and fun to watch, yeah. even in the pouring rain. <laughs> mm. And it was pouring. And so <clears throat> the, the team championship, when it gets rained out like it did, that was <clears throat> based on the total season. And since you went, Keen went undefeated during the season, so they became state champ. That's correct. It, it, it was a foregone collusion that we're going to win anyway. Yeah. It was. But that's the way it's written in the... Uh, the NHIA has a policies and procedures manual for every sport program, and the way it reads in the golf policies and procedures manual is that if the team match is called, the championships first and second are based on the results of the individual season, and we were 27 and 0. We've talked about boys sports. What about some of the um, the girl sports? Well, you, you look at Chloe Molesky and cross-country. I mean, there, there weren't too many people uh, that could keep up with her. But once again, that that's an expectation from that coach. Uh, it's an expectation from the program. It's an expectation from her family. And uh, she just doesn't believe that she's ever going to lose. But uh, that just doesn't happen. That comes from a, a long process of uh, uh, bringing your child up the right way and a long process of the coach taking over, working very closely with that family on what their expectations are. And Oh, go ahead. She also experienced um, some recognition this fall that really speaks to her character, as yep, well as her yeah. athletic um, accomplishments. She was the NHIAA Student Athlete of the Month for October, and uh, we, as athletic directors, are able to nominate students that we believe deserve this honor, and she was selected. She was also a WMUR hometown hero later on in the month of October. And uh, she's also a member of the Student Athlete Leadership Council. So not only is she strong athletically and successful, she's very strong of character and very successful and a wonderful young woman. And the hometown hero <coughs> is not easy for Keen to get because no, we're on the farthest side yeah. of the state and there's, a, there's that pocket there in Manchester. Yeah, it's kind of so. like Temple Mountain doesn't exist. Well, right we're, not on, we're not on their radar. Yeah. So when we send in a nomination, uh, they take a good look yeah. at it, and we've been fortunate enough to have two hometown heroes probably within the last two years, and, uh, and it's been wonderful. And they were very excited, and they came over and filmed her at practice and spoke with her and spoke with Bill Derry, and it was a nice honor for her. And one of the things when you're talking about, for example, cross-country, cross-country, anybody can be cross-country track. They can work hard, and you've had some successful, some, some shot putters right. and some discus. But they work hard at it. It isn't like some of the other sports. If mom and dad has money with basketball mm -hmm. or hockey, you can get into 
these little le these smaller leagues pay a lot of money and you get a jump ahead when right. other kids come to school. Right. Most of the <coughs> off-season training for cross-country is on an individual, individual basis. basis. Um, our two coaches, David Goldsmith and Bill Derry, happen to run a really nice five-day camp in the summer, a cross-country camp. They also run a track camp in the summer as well, and they open it up for all of the area student-athletes that would like to attend. I think that has been wonderful because it, it primarily attracts some of the sub ninth grade student athletes, but our student athletes are like mentors and camp counselors at the camp, and, and I think that's been good. So that culture is being already passed down um, and will hopefully accompany those student athletes to Keene High School, the ones that attend, will attend Keene High School. And you have a working relationship with the um, Keene Rec Department? Yes, a very nice one. And Andy Bohannon was on here. Um, yes last week and he was talking about both the boys and the girls basketball helping on the developmental league right. for the kindergarten and first graders they do and <clears throat> my grandson and my granddaughter are in that group and they have a really good time at it and the community service projects you do we do community service projects for every uh, program every sport program and uh, that happens to be part of their community service project Cross Country runs a race, uh, a 5K race in the fall. Um, the football team works with the, I'm going to call it Pop Warner, even though it's the American <laughs> Youth Football <laughs> League. Uh, they take an evening, and the boys split up, and they go down, and they work different plays, uh, teach them different plays, things that they'll need to know when they get out to the high school. The field hockey team and the volleyball team both do extremely successful play for the pink um, Breast or, cancer? Yes, yes, breast cancer yes. awareness um, functions and events. Um, so it's girls it's, volleyball did it. That girls volleyball did it. Girls field hockey both were very successful, and uh, so there's a lot of that. We Andy Bohannon is very generous in the fact that we still play softball out at Wheelock Park <laughs> for Keene High School. All right, and and uh, the flip is his. I believe his Sunday basketball leagues <laughs> opened up this past yeah. Sunday, yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, and they also use our fields, our softball fields at the high school when they have overflow in the late spring and the summer. It's well, a great working relationship. Yeah, we're all a community. Right? Absolutely. Right. Unfortunately, some communities, this is a school, this is a city, yeah. and it's You're like correct. a big Never wall of China. Yeah, yeah. And it's a total waste of taxpayers' money, yeah. a total ineffective use of uh, facilities. You know, one of... One of the things we worked on this year that I talked to Leslie about, you, you get a program that's as large as we are and a high school as large as we are, sometimes you lose contact with, with the coach in that. Do you want to explain some of the things we're doing this sure. year? Sure. We have um, instituted, Alan and I sat down last spring and we discussed this thoroughly, and we have instituted some new guidelines in the athletic department where I, as the athletic director, hold a preseason conference, a midseason conference, and then an end of season conference slash evaluation with every head coach in the program. And um, we look for expectations, um, team guidelines, uh, goals. What do you want to do with your season? Where's your season going? What is your roadmap? It has been extremely successful, Chris, in really clarifying and solidifying uh, the communication between not just myself and coaches, but coaches and players individually and as a team and as a program, parents, coaches, parents in the athletic department. And uh, I think it's been absolutely wonderful. It's been really wonderful. And one of the best things to come out of this is I was asked to formulate a uniform rotation plan, a five-year rotation mm -hmm. plan. In order to do that, I really needed to have the support of every varsity coach <coughs> saying, yes, I think this is good, or, you know, can you put me in for here, or I just bought uniforms here, I don't think I'll need them, you know, or this amount of money is too much, it's too little. And uh, every head coach has bought into the uniform rotation plan, which is extremely exciting. I think it's going to make a huge difference. It's going to take some of that fundraising burden for uniforms off of the booster clubs who have done a phenomenal job. Um, we have a, I think we have one of the strongest booster club programs in the state. Our, our booster club system is good, it's very productive, and they work very well with the coaches. The coaches work really well with me. I'm really pleased at how the introduction of those new guidelines has gone. Uh, I think it's making our programs stronger. And when you set up a five-year rotation like that, 
uh, you really have to have the buy-in of every coach because I could put you as the head football coach three years down, but you really need it this year. I could put the softball here, but this year you really don't need it there. So you had a lot of input a couple, three weeks, wasn't it, to, to come up with it? Took, it, took me, it took me probably about three weeks to draft it. It took me a good month to really solidify it with – the head coaches because we sat down individually each one of them and I we had a conference we talked about the dollars we talked about you know is this going to be enough five years down the road is this going to be enough why is this program going first why are you where you are and uh, and we did we we have a we have a hundred percent buy-in I'm I mean 100 percent buy-in I'm so pleased and each each year of that five year it's not the same amount each year some years a little bit more some years it's a little bit less and and the coaches did a great job of, you know, not what your wants are, but what your needs are. And We're going to go off a little bit since you've been talking sure. about the, the coaches. When I first came on a school board in 2000, <clears throat> we didn't have an athletic director. We had a part-time athletic mm -hmm. director. And it was almost certain coaches had their own kingdoms. They did their own. And, and, and sometimes we, we got in situations that were really embarrassing to the school and the, and the community. But the coaches, like you're talking about, they work together. They're worrying about the public image of the, the school. You're not having some of the, quote, unquote, some of the cliques or some of the clickies mm -hmm. with the, the families, <clears throat> especially when we, we had certain families who thought all their kids were going to be Division I scholarship. Mm -hmm. How did that work together? How did you, You're talking about the buy-in on the uniforms, that buy-in with the coaches. They just seem to be more of a collective well-focused group. I, I think what you have to do is, is <clears throat> when you when you do something like talking about changing the culture, and culture is a, an easy word to use, yeah. But anytime you have change, people think that they're changed because what they're doing is not right. And that's not true. It's just we're going to look at a look at a different way to do things, and everything is fair and <clears throat> equitable. And uh, I think until we started these meetings with all the teams and, and, uh, and the coaches, uh, Leslie does a th evaluations with them mid-season, end of the year. It's all on paper. And I think people started to finally realize, yeah, this, this makes sense what we're doing. And it's not just we're doing it to you. We're doing it for everyone. And I think the big, the big catalyst to the success of this was this uniform five-year uniform replacement thing because before she went to him and said, you know, you're going to be in year 2012, you're going to be in 2013, where do you want to be? How do you think it's going to fit? And then when your folks all talk, there's a little give and take, you know. I think you need a little bit more next year. I'll take I'll take a year break. And once you get everybody to to buy into the same thing, then you're in pretty good shape. But you're not going to get buy-in unless somebody sets the parameters and the goals. You know, this is what we're going to do. Now you guys figure out the best way that we're going to do it, but don't think we're not going to do it. Well, the other piece is that the, the conferences, the guidelines that we've instituted, have really validated, Chris, everything that's working well. Yeah. Okay, they were not designed to say, this is not working, this needs to change. They were really designed to validate what is working yeah. well, what can be tweaked, where are our strengths, and put it on paper. So okay, you, so that if you asked me to go back and say, yeah. okay, um, what do you feel the expectations were for the girls' field hockey program, I could go back and say to you, well, these were the goals and these were what got met and these were the expectations and this is exactly what was shared. And the other piece that I left out was that every head coach of every program holds a mandatory parent coach, not student athlete coach, parent coach meeting. Student athletes can attend, but in our football program, they gave out equipment at the same time that Coach Lupa was speaking with the parents. I think that that has really worked to clarify exactly how things should work if you have a question or you have an issue. Where do I go first instead of just picking up the phone and if you can't reach Coach Lupo or you can't reach me, then you try Mr. Camille. <laughs> instead, now there's a process for how you go about that. And it also gave them an opportunity to ask questions, ask for clarification. Um, things were clearly outlined. And I think that the fact that everyone, Mr. Camille's right, has to do that has made the buy-in better. And it hasn't been the painful process that I think they were oh, afraid. Everyone's oh God, afraid yes, of change. They were afraid, yeah. Of change. They were thinking, oh, you know. What am I going to talk about? What if somebody asks me a question I can't answer? Right. Okay. So we spent a lot of time going through 
well, this is really what I'm looking for. Oh, well, I do that anyway. Yes, you do. Now I just want you to communicate that um, to your players, to your coaching staff, to your parents and guardians. And I really believe that that's why everybody's doing the same thing. They may not be saying exactly the same thing, but they are doing the same thing. And I'm really pleased. In fact, I just spent the morning setting up the mid-season conferences for the winter head coaches. And because uh, it's already that time, believe it or not, <laughs> we're halfway through the winter season. Because one of the things that I, I feel myself really good about Keen High was you've got competitive teams and you're, com and you're competitive for the team. Like when the football running back got yes. hurt. We're going to go by committee. The, the members are going to drill, yeah. decide this. I can right. do it better this time. And we don't have teams like some schools who are just focused on making one player look good to yeah. the world. Right. You've got one. It's like we are a team. We're going to be competitive for a team. It's not like being a basketball one person who's just going yeah. to keep throwing me the ball and the other four people are just fluff on the court. And, you know, the, the other thing that was interesting, when the boys' soccer team played their first playoff game, <coughs> At, uh, at Keene High School, which would have been a long time since we'd had it's a playoff game. It's been a long game. time, six years. The entire football team came. Yes. Took time out of their practice and sat mm -hmm. on the sidelines and cheered for those kids. I bet you they were there till about the middle of the first uh, half. They were there till the end of the first goal. When the first yeah. goal got scored, they were on their way out. And so. And that's impressive when you see a whole that team it, That there. was impressive. And they did a nice cheer on their way out. Um, and it was good. Which brings me to the next. We have this wonderful group of students that I call them the, the traveling <laughs> fans. Okay, they will attend every sporting event that they can possibly attend. They came to football games, they were at volleyball games, they were at boys and girls soccer games, they were at field hockey games. Um, they they didn't go to golf because you can't stand and cheer. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a more quiet venue. You're not supposed to do that. Um, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> but they came. They rode the bus with, I rode the bus with them, all right, <laughs> over to Bishop Girton uh, for the semifinal football game because they didn't want to drive. They signed up for the mm. fan buffs, so I rode the bus mm. with them. And they are just a really positive group of students. And the Student Athlete Council has adopted this slogan from the University of Maryland, 20 sports, one team. team. All right. And this group is really putting that into action. It's, it's really nice to see. And I think that that has helped to change the culture. And the other piece I think that has helped to change the culture, when Mr. Camille came in um, five or six years ago, and we started to make selections, both, I believe, for faculty and staff, but, but where I'm involved for coaches, the committee is, has a very different look than it used to have. All right, It has at least one or two coaches. It has at least three or four students not necessarily mm. from the program that has the coaching opening, but students, okay, interested in athletes. They're student athletes, most of them, but not always. Um, it has a parent. It has a teacher. It has another administrator, uh, and I'm the facilitator, okay? Very often it may have Mr. Camille and a school board member or our liaison. Sometimes it just has another assistant principal as a representative, and I think that selection process has really worked to change the culture of how we select coaches. And the thing is that those students that are on that committee, their vote is equal to mine or equal to Mrs. Farmer's. They, they're not just there for window dressing. And uh, we just did the, the basketball selection back uh, this summer, and there were two girls that were on that committee uh, picking the boys' basketball coach, and I thought they had the most thorough questions. I thought their discussions uh, after each candidate were phenomenal, and I think I don't think I know when you give students uh, buy into what you're doing and ownership that it works well. We do that with our teachers too. Because I, <coughs> excuse me, to me being an athlete in high school in college, when you stop and look at it, a lot of times, especially in season, as a student athlete, I'm spending a heck of a lot more quality time with the coach mm -hmm. than I right. am with my my parent. I mean, yep. I'm spending two or three yeah, hours week and then cross country we always had a Saturday race and we had a midweek race mm -hmm. and so when you add those up I could be spending 30 hours a week with the coach and kids know if the yeah. guy is faking or the woman is faking if they're in there just for the stipend 
And so you would expect the, the kids that say, hey, I don't want to waste my time. I want a quality individual to be coaching me because I want to get better. I th it was interesting. The first day I was here five or six years ago when we brought this in, uh, we were doing a teacher interview. And I, I wondered whether the students were going to ex not accept but to understand what their role was. And we interviewed the, this first person, and you could kind of tell that the, the teachers on the committee thought this person was pretty good. And I said, well, does anybody have anything to say? And I remember the one student looked at me and said, he never looked me in the eye when I asked him a question, and I wouldn't vote for him. And I figure we're on our way now that they can pick that up. And, and our students, I think, take it very seriously. Very seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the reason they take it very seriously is because they understand that it's, it's um, an honor to be yes. asked. And the second reason they take it very seriously is because they also get to put it on their resume that they have been a member mm. of a selection committee. And the third reason, which I think is the most important reason, is the buy-in piece. Yeah. That, they, that they are a part of change, of something good happening at Keene High School. And, and they have a say in that, and they're a part of it. And I have to be honest, when we first started it with coaches, some of the adults were, well, uh, you know, we, we well, the, uh, and I said, mm. it's OK. Watch it work. It's going mm -hmm. to be okay. And um, their input is invaluable. It is invaluable. Makes a difference. It makes changes, a big difference. Yep. Changes some adults' minds yep. because the adult doesn't always see it the same way the student or the student athlete sees it. All right? It gives it a whole new perspective. It's like, yeah, because the adult may only spend maybe a half hour, an hour mm -hmm. in the interview mm -hmm. and say, oh, you, you know what? Some coaches are actors. They Good talkers, really, you bet. Talkers, and they can really pull the wool over mm -hmm. your eye. And it's kind of like, holy crap, we just gave this guy a contract. Yeah. What are we going to do? He's nowhere near what we thought it we was. We thought he was, yeah. And, and students can see through that quicker than anybody else. Yeah. And so, and I thought one of the interesting things was another time we were doing a, a teacher interview, and we had everybody set, ready to go. And uh, my secretary, Mary, Str Mary Strifolino, said, you got a phone call. So I went and talked on the phone for about two minutes, I walked in, the interview had already started. And who was running it? A student. There were a couple of teachers in there and administrators, but he he had been through one before, he knew how it worked, and I figured, well, that's pretty neat. You got a 17-year-old student in here and he's running the whole show. I don't think I could have done that when I was in high school. I don't think I could have. Oh, I know I could not have done that <laughs> in high school. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we're about halfway through the show, mm -hmm. and part of the thing was Keene High School Athletics. Let's go through all the, um, the fall athletic teams and let's talk about them and their highlights and their successes and their goals for the future. I just happened to bring <laughs> my paperwork oh, here no, just <laughs> so that, uh, because I didn't want to forget anything, okay? I think we already talked about football and Friday Night Lights and what happens in the off season. And that program went to the <clears throat> semifinals this year. And uh, that was a really, really really good football game. It, the score went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And I tell people we didn't